today we're going to jump back into the avalanche. We've been kind of doing a whole kind of series on that, I guess. So today, um, what I did in the rear end, and we're doing the front end now. So if you remember uh, some of my past videos, uh, we did the rear end. It's the first time I've ever done the rear end. So now we got to do the front end because you can't have the rear end be geared differently than the front because when you put it in 4x4, you're going to jack things up. So I think it's uh, three. I think it was 377 in the rear for the stock. So same thing in the front, I believe. So anyways, I when I bought that set for the motive gear, I bought a front and a rear. So I took care of the rear, runs great. Um, even before we did this, you already saw the uploaded videos on the transmission. So I wanted to make sure the rear end was good, the transmission is good, because once I put the front end in, then you're gonna see a whole build session of just how I'm gonna try to transfer into an overland kind of vehicle. So we gotta take care of the front end, so that's what we're gonna get into today. Um, so yeah, let's jump into it, guys.
guys. So we got to that process now where we're going to check the, um, the markings on the teeth. Um, I forget what they call it now. Let me see real quick. I forget what they call it. Um, let's see. Let's check out my handy dandy instructions here. Oh, okay. So yeah, so we're going to check the load pattern. So come back over here. You guys can see if I can get this thing to fold back here. There we go. So as you guys can see right there, drive side, heel side. So basically they're saying like if it's a little bit forward or back, you know what I mean? Then it's definitely not correct. And I would say we're probably a little too forward on it, I guess you want to call it. I don't know how to say it exactly, but I put in on these little shims right here. On the shims, I put uh, the 0.9. So I'm going to try the lowest one, which is a 0.5. Um, they even have some instructions on how you kind of can measure it out from the center. Uh, I'm not going to do that. I did it on the rear. I just basically just... Basically, when you spin it, the trick is, or at least what I've heard, is like push it in as hard as you can and twist. That way, it's technically under load, I guess, if you want to call it. Um, and my rear, it worked perfect. So, I don't know. I could probably just get by with it like this, but I just think it's too far forward because you can see where it's kind of on the back end. There's just not much there. So, I'm just going to pull it off because this is all the test, um, the testing stage. And if I didn't mention it before, basically what you guys saw me... Yeah, originally before was I was basically hollowing out a test bearing. So this is the one that came with the kit. And I, uh, I got a second one so I can hollow it out so I can do this procedure right here. So I can pull it out, pull it in. I guess it's kind of a DIY guy way to do it. I mean, there's probably some more professional ways to do it where they just basically, you know, measure it. But I don't know how you could, you know, press on the shim and then know for sure if it's the right one or not. So this is how I did on the rear. It worked pretty good. So back to it. We're going to bust this one off. And then we're going to put the, the 0.5 shim. I'll have to measure it again because they're bouncing all around. But the lowest one I have is a 0.5. We'll slap that on there. And then we'll see where we're at in the load. Cool? All right, guys. Let's get back into it. All right, guys. So second time around, pattern is looking, I don't know. Once I get right here where the paint actually first hit, it's, uh, it's not looking too bad. It's probably smack dab in the center. It kind of looks like, yeah, it's kind of hard to tell on this one right here. Like it almost looks like the picture, which you're not supposed to have, but then when you look at the back side, it's not too bad. I think we're gonna go with this one. This is the, the 0.5 or 0 0.05. We went from 0 0.09 to 0 0.05, so I think this is gonna be the one. Um, Cause yeah, if you look at it right there, it looks pretty solid. Looking at the instructions, where are they at here? Where did I put those instructions at? Hmm, can't find the instructions. Oh, here they are, cool. So yeah, here we go. Driver side, heel side, toe side. So it kind of shows like they're kind of like, basically you're just looking for it to be smack dab in the middle. And, you know, kind of when you're getting over here, it don't look too bad. Look at the toe side. It's kind of, I think we're about there, man. It looks good. The only thing that's really gonna make a difference, at least in my opinion, and kind of what I've read, is just how long the longevity of the, uh, the pinion and the bearings are gonna last, you know what I mean? So, what is going on, dude? You're fine, bro. Calm down. Jeez. So yeah, all it, all it really does is just kind of prevent from the, you know, wear and tear. You know, as, as close as you can get it to the tolerances as, as possible. I mean, this is just the first step. The next step is still gonna check the backlash and everything like that. That'll be something where, you know, you really wanna make sure your tolerances are really, really good. I think we have like, mm, 0 0.06 hundredths, I think it is, to 0.10 or something like that to have in between the backlash. So we're going to check that next. Um, but yeah, I'm going to call it a win on this one and we'll start uh, getting to the next step. All right, guys, let's jump into it.
now turn up the bass. They love it when I turn up the bass.